All right, so I think this has to be the best laptop that is coming out for developers of any kind. And that's going to be what Apple just announced today at the time of this recording, which is the MacBook Air with the newly announced M1 chip. This is by no means sponsored or paid for by Apple at all. I am just doing a review kind of video, but also talking about some of the highlights of the new M1 chip that relates specifically to developers and why I think this is going to be one of the best laptop considerations if you are in the market for a new laptop. All right, so the M1 chip that is going to be on the MacBook Air, the MacBook Pro, and the Mac mini. I love that they included these on three of those machines. I would have liked to see maybe a new iMac with this thing, but I'm sure there's probably something with thermals and we'll get into thermals in a second, but this is the landing page for the new MacBook Air. And I will just say right now, I would highly recommend trying to get this off of the education store rather than like buying this outright because you'll get $100 off of that. So nice little price, better for an entry level purchase for sure. So couple highlights of the M1 chip. This thing is absolutely insane and I think is going to be groundbreaking in terms of CPUs and really just integrated chips on laptops themselves, especially on the Apple side of things. So for those of you who didn't catch the announcement from Apple, the M1 chip is what they finally announced that is going into the lineup of MacBooks, such as the MacBook Air, MacBook Pro, and then the Mac Mini as well. The M1 chip is basically just an eight core CPU eight core GPU and also has a 16 core neural engine, which does the machine learning side of things that helps with apps like Final Cut Pro or Pixelmator, all built into a single tiny chip, which is insane and almost just, not almost, it's revolutionary in terms of like CPU and just integrated chips in terms of laptops. Like that's crazy. And that tiny little footprint, this little chip right here is doing everything for you. One of the benefits of having it all in one chip is there's one single pool that the chip has to pull from for memory so that there's no you know copying memory and sharing it off to another component like everything is all in a single pool which makes computing so much faster right like that's insane and from what they're saying from the announcement so many more applications are going to benefit from this such as Xcode, Visual Studio Code, or for us creators like Final Cut Pro, this is going to be insane in terms of like 4K timeline scrubbing, building projects, compilation times. The fact that that's a thing now, or this is a thing and that we're able to get it in a footprint like the MacBook Air, that's going to be awesome for any developer of any kind really. And that's something that we're going to benefit from for sure. With the eight cores, there's going to be four divided. Four of those cores are dedicated to high performance and four of the other ones are going to be dedicated to high efficiency. So the four performance cores are gonna be primarily dedicated to the multi-threaded workloads and then the high efficiency ones are going to be dedicated more towards the lighter workloads so you know you're browsing emails browsing the web and then the other four are then now isolated and able to work on the higher workload stuff such as video editing coding compiling multitasking is just going to be a non-issue right like in that sense if those eight cores can work together in tandem and do that where they're offloading tasks in terms of high performance and high efficiency that is awesome in a footprint again such as the macbook air now with that being said the other extra feature that i actually really did love and enjoyed them announcing because it was so nonchalant I feel like but it's such a big feature is that the MacBook Air is featuring a fanless design so there is no fan in the MacBook Air and that small of a MacBook Air and I'm sure if any of you guys who had MacBook Airs before you guys know that thing is tiny thermals can get out of hand you know it's a, it's a small chassis right so heat needs to get distributed well enough for that thing to be cool and you know MacBook Airs and I've had an old one before that thing got really hot and really loud really fast fast, you know, and I was just watching YouTube on that thing. For this to have a fanless design where there's virtually no noise now brings up two things for me. One, that's insane. Not having a laptop make any noise is going to be awesome, especially for content creation, because sometimes when I'm creating videos, there's a little bit of fan noise, a little bit of maybe a little bit of coil whine. And, you know, it takes a little bit to get those out of background. But the other thing that now raises for me is what are the thermals going to be like? This thing is freshly announced. The M1 chip is fairly new, so we don't know if there's any possible issues that are gonna arise from this thing. 
right? So that's one thing to keep in mind is thermals. Yes, the M1 chip is tiny. Yes, the M1 chip is very efficient and high performing, but what are the thermals going to look like on this small, tiny chip, especially in the MacBook Air, where there is no fan at all in the chassis? You don't get that with the Mac Mini or the MacBook Pro, where both of those do have a built-in cooling system where they there is a fan present inside the chassis. So it's gonna be interesting to see what the MacBook Air is going to be like in terms of thermals and efficiency in high workloads. To go on top of the eight core CPU, there is also an integrated eight core GPU. The base model of the MacBook Air features a seven core GPU to lower the price, which shouldn't be an issue. Seven core GPU is still pretty nice. The kicker to this is that GPU is built into the M1 chip. So again, reduces the footprint and this is going to be one of the most powerful integrated GPUs on a laptop from what it looks like, right? I can't say anything. I'm just going based off of what the announcement was, but as an integrated GPU to have this kind of power that they're boasting and advertising is going to be, I'm going to use the word insane a lot, but it's pretty insane, right? For a MacBook Air to have this kind of integrated GPU is awesome. I'm not necessarily sure if this thing is going to help with development at all, but if you are a developer and also like to create content, that is going to help in things like Final Cut Pro where you're scrubbing through timelines and this is potentially adding on to the effect of the eight core GPU where timeline scrubbing is going to be almost like a non-issue again. Like you're gonna go through 4K footage like no problem. The other nice feature that I'm sure we're all look for in a laptop is going to be battery life. With the addition of the M1 chip, the new MacBook Air can go up to 18 hours of battery life, 15 if you're doing higher workload tasks and things like that. 18 hours is pretty long on a MacBook Air. There are other laptops out there that do boast higher battery lives, but for a MacBook specifically, 18 hours is a damn long time. And that would be awesome to have, especially if you're on the go a lot, you like to travel, you like to work in coffee shops, you don't have to reach for a charger, you know, super fast. With the 16, I'm reaching for a charger almost instantly because you know the battery life is yes 100 watt hours but I do heavy heavy intensive work and the battery life isn't all that great with 18 hours don't have to reach for a charger that's one less thing I have to worry about that's awesome to have especially in a footprint like this where it's very very mobile and almost acts as now a mobile workstation other nice specs that we need to take into account especially for the development side of things is the amount of RAM and the amount of storage you're now able to get base models start at 8 gigs of RAM and 256 gigs of of storage, which is an SSD, of course. You can always bump that up to 16 gigs of RAM. And I believe on the MacBook Air, they are boasting a two terabyte SSD max capacity for storage, which is insane. Two terabytes on a MacBook Air, that's just like, you're not running out for very long unless you're doing content creation where 4K footage can add up very, very fast and very, very easily. But for software development or web development, any type, you don't have to worry about storage at all. Two terabytes, even 256 can get you by, you know, you can always up that in small increments. So 256, 512, one terabyte, those would be sufficient enough. It'll increase the base price for sure from 899 up a little bit, but doesn't break the bank still. It's still a nice choice as far as the price point goes. So what does that mean for developers? Specifically for us, what are the features that we look for in a laptop? One is budget, for sure. You always wanna make sure that the budget fits what you have. Two, a great keyboard. If you are on the go, don't have an external keyboard and want a nice keyboard to type on because that's what we mainly do, you need to make sure you have that. And three, speed and performance. So the cores that we're gonna have on this thing and the efficiency and speed of that thing, as well as memory and storage. We need to make sure we have all those things when we're looking for a laptop to use specifically for development. In my opinion, based off of what the announcement looked like and what the specs are looking like, this hits all of those markers. The price point, especially if you go on the education store, like I mentioned at the beginning of this video, 899, yes, still looks expensive, but comparatively to other models, 899 is still a cheap and very nice entry level deal as far as getting into the Mac ecosystem and getting into a laptop ecosystem or upgrading existing laptops to you know, up your efficiency and performance in terms of software or web development. And like I said, if you are looking to get into the Mac ecosystem, I think this is a good entry point for you, especially if you're looking to use Swift and Xcode. I mean, for 899, especially for the base model, that's a pretty good deal. And the other thing that I look for in a laptop, especially it being the MacBook Air, is the size and footprints, right? This thing being a MacBook Air, as most of you know, very, very thin and gradually increases in size, but it, again, still very compact 
compact and mobile with 13 inches of screen size and like the weight is insane. I'll probably just show it on the screen right now, but this thing you can take anywhere with you, especially if you like to travel and go on the go. Like I said, if you wanna code in coffee shops, go around and travel once everything opens up. Like this thing is going to be your best friend when it comes to traveling. The 16 inch MacBook Pro isn't that great when it comes to traveling, but a MacBook Air at this size, at this performance, for $899, again, a great steal. I'm going to drill in the price point because you have to take that in mind. $899 for something like this is pretty gnarly. I wish this came out before I bought the 16 inch. I would have bought this for sure. Now, in terms of the performance side of things, the M1 chip is going to allow us as developers who have faster build times, faster compile times, increase the opening of projects, increase the just overall development process in terms of efficiency and speed. And that's always something we look for, especially when it comes to laptops. Desktops, we don't have to worry about that too much because the performance is always upgradable. With the laptop, not so much, right? We need to make sure that whatever choice we choose, that laptop is the one that we want because most of the time, especially for Macs, you can't upgrade the components. What you get is what you get and what you choose is what you choose. So in terms of the base model, I will only speak on the base model because any upgrades obviously will increase the performance and speed of things. The base model, 256 gigs of storage. M1 chip with an eight core and seven core GPU and eight gigs of RAM plenty of performance and plenty of room for you to get your projects done, build some awesome things, and the development process is not going to be sluggish. This thing is going to be an absolute beast no matter where you go. So if you're looking to get into development or you are looking to upgrade your laptop because speeds might be sluggish or things like that, I think this thing is going to be your solution for a very long time, right? Like this thing is going to last a couple years, if not more. With the battery life, the speed, the size. I think, again, I'm going to drill this in. This is going to be a solid choice for any developer out there, whether your software, web, backend, front end, doesn't matter. This thing is going to be great at doing whatever tasks you throw at it. So all in all, if you are in the market for a new laptop, specifically for web or software development, I think this is going to be an all around great package for you to consider when it comes to buying a laptop. Yes, of course, there are going to be other decisions for you, and there might be some factors for this thing that play in, such as probably the main thing is budget. I think for $899, this thing is going to be, again, an all-in-all -all great package, and you should definitely consider buying this thing, especially if you're wanting to get into the Mac ecosystem for development. The Mac ecosystem is just a lot better to code in, in my experience, and I thoroughly enjoy it. There's nothing to knock on Windows. I started on Windows when I was coding, but you know, coding in a Unix-based environment, everything is kind of just seamless and works really well. And I can't get rid of the bash terminal. So yes, I am aware that Git bash is on Windows, but you know, having the terminal here already is, is amazing. So if you are considering looking for a new laptop or wanting to get into the Mac ecosystem, consider the MacBook Air. I think this is going to be the best laptop for developers in 2020 slash 2021. If you guys enjoyed this video, give this video a thumbs up. Hit me down in the comments if you have any questions regarding laptops or code in general, or just anything, ask me down there. And I will see you guys on the next video. Peace out.